Hi, this is Tony Appleby with the Project Management Institute, and I'm here at RISE 2019 in Hong Kong. And I'm delighted to have with me Guy Dietrich, who's the Chief Innovation Officer over at Cisco Systems. Welcome, Guy. Thank you. So you've given a couple of presentations during your time here. Can you tell us a little bit about those, and what are some of the takeaways from those that we should have? Well, I, I, I made two presentations. One was on um, uh, learning locally and, and, and acting globally. So it, it's a fascinating subject because we're doing a program called Country Digital Acceleration, uh, which works with countries to help them digitize faster, to help execute on their national digital agendas. And so I was able to share some of the inspiring stories uh, from around the world of the impact digitization is having on communities. Um, and then the second subject was around the challenges associated uh, with digitization and some of the things that we're taking on around the world at Cisco, such as uh, inclusion access to education, access to quality health care, and some of the programs that we're doing to help um, uh, address those issues. Well, that, that sounds really intriguing. Can we dig into those just a little bit more? Sure. So if you look at a project that we have, for instance, in Saudi Arabia, um, it, it used to be that if you were in far southern reaches of Saudi Arabia and you fell ill and you needed to get to a doctor, you had to travel to Riyadh to get first quality health care. Now, because we are able to connect local clinics right down the street from people's houses, we can connect them to the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston for their oncology care. We can connect them anywhere in the world through uh, distributed health care. And that's just one example. We've got 370 projects active or completed around the world related to digitization. That, that is truly impressive. And we're seeing a lot of that here in the conference, that innovative thinking, know and approaching things from different angles than we have historically uh, mm -hmm. incremental building is tearing everything down and starting afresh now you seeing a lot of the same similar absolutely I mean it the, the amount of disruption that's going to happen over the next decade as we go from 25 million 25 billion connected things to 500 billion connected things, uh, it's going to be monumental. Wow. Um, it, and it's very exciting. And so with all that disruption, what are the types of challenges that organizations and individuals in those organizations are going to be facing? And what would you suggest they do to prepare for it and address it? You know, I think the, the, the primary thing that, that people should understand is that um, there there shouldn't be a distinction between being a strategic, profitable company uh, and serving your community and giving back. That the best run companies with the strongest leaders realize that those things are complementary. And, and it invites all sorts of new opportunity uh, for companies to give back, but also to allow their employees and to allow their customers to be proud to be associated with them. Nice. So in talking about strategy, a lot of Bright Lines you know, thought leadership is specific to helping organizations be successful in strategy mm -hmm. delivery. Can you tell me this a little bit about how you're being successful with your work? Yeah, so we, uh, we'll talk about this country digital acceleration program Please. again. You know, one of the challenges that we had uh, in, in initially getting this started is that uh, governments work in silos. Um, they have their own individual silos that typically are surrounded by walls that are then surrounded by moats and nothing leaves and nothing gets in. Uh, well, in order for our programs to be successful, we have to cut across that. Uh, we have to cut across those silos and bring them all together in order to deliver on these country digital acceleration programs because they're very large, very complex. And one of the things that we found that has been most impactful is that we run a workshop and in that workshop we combine strategy and we combine execution and budgets all in the same project, all in the same program. So when we emerge from these workshops, um, they're ready to get started right away and there is not a distinction between strategy and execution. Nice, nice. So in these environments, you know, people are 
probably having to learn and adapt quite a bit. I should, I should like to know from your perspective what would be the number one skill or trait or, or knowledge bit that a worker should have in order to be successful. You know, the, the, the common answer is always around um, agility and flexibility. Um, I would actually uh, add in their patience. And, and to be able to be patient um, in this ever-changing world, um, I think is an advantage. And I'll give you an example. When we think about 5G, everyone refers to it as a race, right? It's the 5G race. It's not a race at all. Um, when you think about a race, you think about a sprint. Whoever gets to the finish line first wins. That's not how the information age worked. It's not how the internet became pervasive. Um, it was gradual. It was strategic. It was thoughtful. And it's going to be the same thing with 5G. And it's going to take patience. The, this idea somehow that one company, one country, one continent is going to own 5G is just a mischaracterization. If someone has to say it's a race, I'd suggest that it's a marathon. And we are in the first 10 yards of the 26.2 miles. <laughs> Nicely said. I appreciate your time today, Guy. Uh, audience, thank you. and. Thank you, sir. My pleasure.